Go down there, Diane. Let's go down there. You're like their number one favorite guy. Because you won them cash. Well, the week is finally here. I guess there's no finally about it because it feels like only yesterday we were talking about the Masters and Augusta National. I mean, it was November with all this COVID stuff going on. Dustin Johnson hasn't, well, he's not going to be reigning Masters champion for very long. Elk, did he get the short end of the stick? He certainly feels like he did, Diane. Like four months of being the Masters champion. I don't even see him out at a bar or a restaurant because of COVID with his jacket on. I mean, I feel like he's sort of got to defend something that he hasn't even had the right to defend yet. But Diane, we need the 2021 Masters. You know why? Because there's going to be fans and my spies have told me that the the, the glorious a bloom of the Azaleas is going to match up with next week. It is going to be spectacular in all of its glory, 80 degrees, slight winds, beautiful week of weather. And let's face it, we need both of those things. Yeah, for sure. I've already been checking social media this morning as we record it. It's Monday morning and people have been putting up pictures of their tickets and Washington Road, Hooters in Augusta. So it feels a little bit more normal. And you're right. The golf world really did need this. Shush. Gosh, growling. Okay. <laughs> and patrons back on the course, which is not only going to bring so much to us watching it on TV, but for the golfers as well. It's, um, it's special. It really is. They all talk about it. And I think they're really going to feel it this year in particular. I heard that big growl. I know, my puppy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Masters Tournament, Diane, uh, we all look forward to it. Yes, we did have one in November. Yes, it was 20 under. Yes, the golf course was soft. There was no flowers, all of that. But that's all going to go away this week, Diane. I've talked to some people that are on the site. And this week is going to be completely different. This is going to be back to normal. Honestly, this is my own opinion. I don't think Augusta National was that crazy about having 20 under win their tournament. I don't think Augusta National was that crazy about Bryson DeJambeau telling the world that 67 was the par for him around Augusta National. I've been told that they've been top dressing the greens before the ladies came in last week. What they do, they take a almost a talcum powder uh, sand and put on the green. It, it absorbs a lot of moisture and it makes the blade of grass tougher to come through, makes the blade very lean, and they are expecting lightning fast greens. Diane, I think, I think Augusta is going to have some tricks up their sleeve this week with some pin placements and super fast greens. And uh, when you say the greens are going to be super fast, I take it that means they're going to be super firm as well. Yes, uh, they will be, Diane. I think, I think this week um, we need super fast greens. Augusta has that advantage with the uh, sub-air system, but they've had dry weather. They've had very cold weather. They've been top dressing. They're firming up the greens. I think we're going to see a week, Diane, of super, super old school firm greens with really, really nasty pin placements. And that is going to change everything the way we handicap because we need experience. We need super putters. We need super chippers. It's not going to be an iron fest this week. We've talked about this before as well, the fact that experience plays so much around Augusta National. The year that we really talked about it was the year that Tiger went on to win and it just proves everything. But this year in particular, as you say, that's going to have such a huge bearing on how we handicap the field. So on our tour report this week, we're going to be, well, re-ranking the entire field. We're going to give you our top 10. Then we're going to give you some sizzlers and some dark horse picks as well. We had our pre-production call and we always say it's, um, it's almost such a difficult tournament to handicap and re-rank the field because you've got the best players in the world competing and the, you, uh, there's going to be no huge surprises when it comes to the top 10. No, and I think you're right that it's, it, it's tough to difficult to put together the formula of what's going to happen, but really and truly there's only a very small amount of players can win this tournament particularly on a hard tricky 
firm golf course that we're going to see this week, Diane. Right, so that's what we're going to dive into and um, I'm looking forward to our tour report for the Masters 2021. Compete against your friends on PGA Tour events. Win cash and bragging rights. Test your golf knowledge. Experience the success and failure of PGA oh, Tour players. Man. SG Tour App is an engaging golf experience designed by professional golfers that created a variety of games, including single and multi-day games, as well as tournament long contests. It's really simple. Join or create a game, pick four players and win cash. You can even immerse yourself in interactive features, including course strategy, Hut predictor and daily content exclusively from PGA Tour players. The word is out and golf fans are catching on. So don't miss out. Download the SG Tour app now. It's the Secret Golf Tour Report for the Masters. It brings me such joy to be able to say that. Now, we've already talked a little bit about the course, the fact that it's going to be firm and fast. Um, Elk, you were saying that you think they're going to really put in some tricky old school pin positions as well. So experience is going to be even more important than we saw last year around Augusta National. Yeah, and they've, they've taken down some of the rough, for example, around the sides of the fairways, which I think is a good thing when I start to think about holes like number two, uh, where if you hook the ball with the rough, it used to stop the ball from going way down into the azaleas, into the little creeks. In the old days, when we didn't have any rough at all, if you missed the fairway, it bounded down and you were kind of gone. Uh, so I think they've kind of brought back a few old school uh, set up features, Diane, particularly with firm greens. Okay. Well, it's uh, interesting to note right now that the Vegas favourite is Dustin Johnson. He, of course, won in November and he is the bookies' favourite to retain that green jacket. But we should say that it's actually very rare that the favourite goes on to win. I mean, last year for November time, Bryson DeChambeau <laughs> was the favourite. Um, he made the cut and then he got spanked by Bernard Langer <laughs> at the weekend. <laughs> and as you were saying, you know, he had all this talk beforehand about how with all the developments in his game that he saw it as a par 67. And Augusta National and all those green jackets, they were not happy with what he said. Well, Bryson DeChambeau ruined his masters last year with his mouth. He said the course was a 67 par for him. He played a horrendous game plan. He tried to drive it on the third hole and finished up the hill and made a triple. He tried to hit it on the green out of the woods and on 13 and made a double. When he arrived, the whole tour was intimidated by Bryson DeChambeau. But the way he played that week, Diane, where he went for everything and I don't know Diane you've got to respect the angles you've got to respect the slopes of Augusta National and he got penalized at every point and finished up to make everything worse you just said it he got paired with 64 year old Bernard Langer who beat him head to head at Augusta on the Sunday so which Bryson DeChambeau is going to show up this week is it going to be show off Bryson or is it going to be more you know organized and play to that strength that where is the power on his belt what tool is he going to use on these holes to play it better and not to take anything away from Bernard Langer because we're weighting experience so heavily this week and not only does he have experience but he's still the boss of the champions tour so who knows? Always a fun name to watch. Right, we're going to get right into our top 10, though. And uh, our number one, hopefully we're not jinxing the favourite. <laughs> but our favourite this week is the Valero Texas Open champion. We have the 2015 Masters champion, Jordan Spieth, at number one. We certainly do, Diane. And when I think about what is it going to take this week to do to win the green jacket, you are going to have to be an incredible putter. You are going to have to have the most imagination on these greens. When you miss a green, can you hit the little touch shots that we know Jordan Speed is better than anyone at? 
He's had heartbreak at Augusta when he dumped two balls in the water at 12. He's done that. He's won a green jacket. Jordan Speed has put himself, Diane, at the top of the list because of the skill set that he has and the problem that he's just been through. He has come through it. And now his confidence, Diane, and he is calm going into Augusta. Okay. So we have Jordan Spieth as our number one this week. Number two, well, we talked about him just a few minutes ago, last year's favorite who ended up finishing in a tie for 34th, Bryson DeChambeau, who it seems he's only improved and maybe learned to manage his game. And by manage, I mean, maybe pull it back ever so slightly, even more since November. If Bryson, Diane could make the adjustments of what he did wrong in November. It will be the most valuable trip he ever had to Augusta was November when he screwed up. If he uses his power to his advantage when he when he needs it and lays back when he doesn't, he will be right at the top of this tournament. He is so gifted, so much power, all of that putts well, but he's got to play the angles. He is trying to, he went for it too much in November. I think that um, he finished third at the Players' Championship. And I think the way that we saw him strategize, TBC Sawgrass showed that he has pulled it back a little bit. I don't want to say the word mature, um, but I think he was going out there and he had all this new speed and power and was just going for absolute craziness off the tee. But I think the way that he, played TBC Sawgrass, he got himself in spots that a couple of months prior, he maybe wouldn't have been able to manage as well as he did. So it does show this kind of improvement. Yeah, so with a firm golf course, we saw guys trying to drive. He wasn't the only one trying to drive the third green at Augusta. Diane, Justin Thomas went up, went for it. But the reason they did was the grass was lush up there around the green. They were able to pitch the ball up and make it stop. Now think about that now, if it's almost cement-like, it's more advantageous to be back 80 yards and they will have to negotiate all this. We talked already about Jordan Spieth. Jordan Spieth will methodically work his way around this golf course the way Ben Crenshaw did or Jack Nicholas did. He is a historian. He knows his strengths and he knows what it takes to do with it. I'm looking for that kind of player this week. Okay, well you mentioned Justin Thomas and we have him at number three this week. He's got better around Augusta National every year and last year he finished fourth. We just talked about the Players' Championship. He dominated the weekend and beat Lee Westwood. Justin Thomas, imagine in the space of two months winning the Players' Championship and then the Masters. Justin Thomas, as you know, is one of my favorite players. He's uh, won the Players' Championship in spectacular weekend form. Him and Jordan Spieth, who are best mates, Diane, he must be thinking, oh my God, I thought I had this guy put away a couple of weeks ago, and now all of a sudden, this is the guy I've got to beat now. He's going to probably be playing practice rounds with him today and tomorrow up at Augusta. But he knows that Jordan Spieth's a better putter than him. So Justin Thomas, this may have helped him push him up a little bit more. He'll be more focused. When he played in November, it looked like he played terrible. He looked like he was frustrated every shot and finished third, I think, in November. Justin Thomas will benefit a little bit from Spieth winning because he knows what Spieth can do and it's going to focus JT. Yeah, I love these guys. You know, they're such good friends and you see on social media, I saw that the PGA Tour had posted stuff on Instagram about Ricky and about Jordan and Justin Thomas is like the first one to comment. So they're all best friends and they they drive each other to even be better. So it's going to be fun to see that. Um, at number four, we have the defending champion, Dustin Johnson. Last November, he broke the Masters 72 hole scoring record by two in his five shot victory, which was stunning to watch. Dustin Johnson, we have him at number four this week. What do you think about DJ's game, where it is right now, compared to where it was last November? Well, each one of these top 10 guys has a very unique idea right next to the name. We've heard of Speeves, Dijembo, JT. I'm a little uncertain with Dustin Johnson. He didn't play so great at the match 
play. He committed to Texas. We thought he maybe needed to fix something in his game. Then he withdrew from Texas. Is he okay? Where is he? Uh, he's doing the hosting, of course, the, the past champions dinner. He went with the old school menu, the Ben Hogan menu of a steak and, uh, and apple cobbler, which is a tremendous old school pick. Uh, I am not sure about Dustin Johnson's game, Diane. He looked a little wobbly over the putter in the match play, but we know he knows how to play Augusta. I am just not ready to walk over the ledge and say DJ is a favorite. I am not. Well, uh, tied for 48th of the players, 54th at the WGC workday at concession. And then, as you say, he didn't make it through his group at the match play. However, when it comes to DJ, he is... And I think we've seen this more and more, especially when he won. We saw a different side to him when he won the Masters last year, that he's so um, quietly intelligent, quietly in his own mind, like he just goes about his business. So... We don't really know what he's been working on, but what we do know is he is going to go out there with confidence and he is going to be in contention. He's not worried about things around him. Nothing bothers him. What he will know is when he walks on the first tee on Thursday, he knows exactly what swing, seat, swing feel he had in November. He'll know exactly what lines and he'll be able to probably reproduce that feel pretty quickly. Now, Will he work his way around a very firm? Will he putt as good on super greens that are super firm where you have a lot more break? I prefer a Jordan Spieth more, Ben Crenshaw type Phil Mickelson player in form. Spieth is the master at this kind of putting game. DJ is great, but we're just gonna have to see what happens off the tee with DJ. Okay, <laughs> keeps coming back to Spieth. You can see why he's our favorite this week. Right, at number five, this is a guy who's uh, definitely one of my favorites for the week for a number of reasons, but his best finish in the Masters has been fourth in 2018. In his last three appearances, he's finished top 10 in each. The question mark over John Ram was gonna be that he did publicly say a long time ago that his baby was due Masters week. And the great news is that Kelly, his wife, had their little boy over the weekend. So he is green for go. And he just has this whole new amazing life as a father. Surely that is going to just let him, I don't know, he's gonna be the happiest man stepping foot on Augusta National before the tournament even starts. I think you're right. And I have some experience with that field, Diane, in 1995. My daughter, Annie, was born a week before the Masters. And when I arrived at Augusta, I was so calm, so relaxed. I finished up placing third that year behind Ben Crenshaw, who won it. I think John Rahm, Diane, is better positioned than he ever has for a major with this little development, this little bundle of boy a week ago. I think it'll take a lot of the sting out of him. He gets mad at himself and people say it doesn't affect him, but of course it does because he's not been winning. So I think, and I talked to you about in this earlier, he may be the favorite for me. I'm not sure yet. I'm the same, I'm the same. I just think that, um, I love that you mentioned there, he's had this kind of fiery temperament, but I just think that we're gonna see this amazing, soft, lovable side to John Ram, just because he is gonna be filled with love this week um, as he plays. So looking forward to seeing it. And wouldn't that be an amazing story for him to go out and win that green jacket the same week that, oh, it would be a week to the day since his son was born, very cute. Okay, we're working our way through our top 10 for the Masters. We've given you one to five. Jordan Spieth, Bryson DeChambeau, Justin Thomas, Dustin Johnson, and John Ram. I mean, the hottest players in the world. So still to come, we're gonna go through the rest of the 10. We have some sizzlers and some dark horses as well. Get in the game on the SG Tour Golf Gaming app and play four ball. It's a classic stroke play competition based on the aggregate scores of four players. Who makes your team? Well, pick four guys, one from each tier based on the current World Golf Rankings. Want a tip? You need four guys to make the cut. Get in the game on the SG Tour Golf Gaming app, available on iOS in the App Store. 
It's our tour report for the Masters from Secret Golf. I'm Diane Knox and Steve Elkington is here as well. Elk, if you had to pick um, one hole for you, your time playing the Masters, the most memorable hole around Augusta National, which one would it be? I love to play number 15, Diane, because if I hit a really good drive, I was sitting at the top of the hill. I, you had to wait on the green to clear. You could see people as far as the eye could see. And you knew if you were going for the green and you landed on, you were going to get the biggest roar. It would make the hairs on your arm stick up all the way down, walking down to that green across uh, Hogan's Bridge and onto the green. It was just a wonderful, uh, a wonderful hole. Oh. Okay, well, we're going through our re-ranked top 10 right now. We have Jordan Spieth as our number one this week after winning the Valero Texas Open last week. Then Bryson DeChambeau at number two, Justin Thomas at three, Dustin Johnson defending champion at four, and new daddy John Ram at number five. So coming in at number six, a guy who is playing in his fourth Masters, best finish was in a tie for second in 2019, Xander Shoffley has made it at number six. Well, out of this top 10 of guys, I don't think there's going to be any surprises this week with the champion. They're going to come out of this, probably this top 10 that we're talking about today. And this kid right here, Xander Shoffley, is a kid compared to my age, is the, is the best drawer of the ball in this group. He basically shot pattern, moves right to left about 15 feet, suits perfect for Augusta National. He is a big time player. Um, I just think Shoffley will be there in the end, Diane. He he has everything that he needs. He's a pedigree is, is good. He's been there, as you've noted, second. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a a watchful eye on Shoffley this week. The only thing about Shoffley is for such a long time he was so consistent and he was in the top 10 pretty much every week. I think six top 10s and eight starts. And then looking at his last four starts, he hasn't had any top 10 finishes. He missed the cut at the players. We may be seeing a little slump in his game. And the, I've read a couple of comparisons to Tony Fina, which is so mean, but just the fact that, you know, he hasn't had a win since January 2019. Is he having some problems kind of closing it out on a Sunday? He had some problems closing it out in Phoenix this year when uh, Brooks Kepka ran him over at the end. He hooked a couple of shots. I think Shoffley deserves to be in the top 10. He's very consistent ball striker, likes to move the ball right to left. He's a good putter, a very good competitor. Uh, I just think he's a sort of a Tom Watson, Tom Kite kind of player, Hale Irwin. He's just tough. And uh, I like where he is this week's position here. He's got a lot of firepower above him. There'll be no pressure on Shoffley this week. Nobody will be talking about him. I think he can slide right in there. Okay, coming in at number seven is the 2018 Masters champion. When it comes to short game and his putting, few people better than Patrick Reed, and he has those winning memories around Augusta National. So we have P. Reed at number seven. Went to school right there at Augusta State. He's very comfortable in this environment as far as turf conditions and what he's going to expect to see at Augusta National. Um, you know, there's no doubt that we have stacked this board with experience, guys that know how to play Augusta. I cannot tell you this enough, and we can clip this out, you can play it over and over and over again, Diane. When the course gets firm and the greens get super fast, the field of guys that can win it becomes about like that. And Patrick Reed is in that group. He's won the tournament. He grew up playing around this neighborhood, this area at Augusta State. And he's one of the best chippers and scramblers and putters in the game. Okay, well, um, number eight on our list. <laughs> I was gonna go into the Patrick Reed stuff saying controversies aside, um, and that's fine. But there's just so much chitter chatter around our number eight guy right now, Rory McIlroy. <laughs> now, the, the main thing is, and it comes up every year, is that he's never won the Masters. He has every other major, so the green jacket would complete the Grand Slam. Best finish here was fourth 
in 2015. We've seen him be in contention a lot when it comes to Sunday and just not being able to get the job done. Elk, he's been talking recently about the fact that he's been looking for a spark, looking for motivation everywhere. If this week is not the motivation that he needs, then <laughs> I mean, what are we searching for? Yeah, it, it's such a big topic is Roy McElroy. He's probably um, should be the number one story coming into this week, but he's not. He's probably about the 10th story trying to complete the Grand Slam. He has a new coach. He has missed cuts. He has been all over the place mentally. Uh, I don't know where, he's, where he is, but I think he deserves to be in the top 10 just because we know he's going to be the most motivated guy this week for the Grand Slam. How many more chances is he going to get? He should have more. Where's his head this week? Is he is he good with his swing? Is he good with his coach? Is he where is he? And it's a question mark always with him. It's never definite with him. It's not like when I talk about Justin Thomas. He's sometimes focused, sometimes not. I mean, you're from that side of the pond, Diane. There's everybody on that side of the pond wants him to complete the, the slam. Some over here want him to see it. I don't know. Where is he? You tell me. Well, with his new coach, Pete Cowan, I think this is a great development. His previous coach had been his childhood coach. So somebody that he'd worked with his whole life, not even his whole career, his whole life. His caddy is his childhood best friend. So him making this switch was a really dramatic gesture from McElroy. But I mean, how, how we, do we know how long ago this was exactly? It's going to take a little while for these changes to bed in. Yeah, I saw him uh, practicing on the range with one new idea at the uh, match play. He was practicing right-handed. We all know that Rory, when he when he hits the ball great, he gets up to the top of the swing, beautiful, and then he has a little shift to the inside, and he hits that power draw out there. I would say the right-hand swing was to take out some of that shift to the right, get away from that quick hook or the block. So we'll see. I mean, Pete Cow and his coach has caught, taught almost all the Europeans. They've all been great players and great strikers. Rory McIlroy is one of the great strikers in the game. It's what is attached here is what we got to find out if we're going to bet on Rory McIlroy this week. Okay. Coming in at number nine is a man who does have a green jacket. He won in 2017. This is going to be Sergio Garcia's 22nd Masters. So we talk about the knowledge and the experience of Augusta National. This was my big pick for the WGC match play and he almost did it. We saw some brilliant form from Garcia. He's He had a win at the Sanderson Farms on the PGA Tour not long ago. So we have Sergio at number nine in our top 10 this week you can get shocked when you play Augusta Diane on the golf course you can miss hit a ball and finish in such a terrible spot that you are physically shaken and it might take you a few holes to get over that double bogey you just made Sergio Garcia will never be shocked at Augusta because you've told me he's played here for the 22nd time and he won't be shocked with some of the crazy pin placements or crazy speed of the greens. He knows how to play this golf course. And let's face it, he's striking it well. His putting is not unreal, but he knows how to putt at Augusta. Uh-huh. And he's uh, he's been working on his putting by closing his eyes, isn't this like his new technique? But he didn't play in November because he tested positive for COVID. So imagine that you're a past champion, you're looking forward to it for so long, then you can't play. I think with the great form that we've seen from Sergio of late and also the fact that he's had to wait such a long time compared to everyone else to play in the Masters, I think that he's going to be raving to go. He will be. He's a great striker. He's one of the best strikers over a couple of decades on our tour. Um, again, I am stacking this board, Diane, with experience because I just think most of the youngsters that are going in, they've got no chance this week with a crazy set of greens, firm greens. They're going to be really shocked. They're going to finish in places they'd rather not be in. How do they negotiate these big swinging putts? How do I two putt from certain areas? How do I chip from this side of the green? All that work. All these guys, they've seen it, they've done it. I learned this when I played with Crenshaw there back in the day. Elk, this is what you expect when we get it here and all this sort of stuff. So I am stacking my board with experience, Diane, and you know it. 
Okay, and then completing our top 10 is someone, you're gonna be happy that uh, this guy <laughs> has made it into the top 10. He played so well last year, ended up finishing top five. Um, it's Cameron Smith, the Australian, the guy that's got the most amazing mullet on the PGA Tour right now. But he has definitely earned his place in this top 10. Well, Diane, Australians have not won a lot of green jackets. Only one with Adam Scott, we call him the jacket. But Australians play well at Augusta. Greg Norman play well, Adam Scott, of course, and Cameron Smith. They've grown up in Australia, Diane, putting on some of the most treacherous greens at Royal Melbourne, down in Victoria, part of Australia. They're very similar. I mean, Alison McKenzie, same designer. We see these greens all the time in Australia. And Cameron Smith finished second. He played a great tournament there in November. There's no surprise that we've moved him up a little bit, Diane, here into the top 10. First time, I think, for Cam Smith. But there is such a thing as horses for courses. And Cam Smith has a beautiful uh, memory of what happened to him in November on this golf course. And I think, I think he's going to be fine this week. Isn't it crazy? He became the first player in Masters history to shoot four rounds in the 60s last year, and he still lost by five shots to DJ. <laughs> yeah, uh, Cameron Smith played a great week last year. Uh, any other Masters, as you've noted, would he would have won. Uh, you know, we talked at the top of the show, 20 under is not going to be the number this week. I'm thinking maybe single digits this week. And we talk about his form, top 20s at the workday and at the players. So, and he played great at the, the match play as well. Can you imagine him putting that green jacket on on Sunday with that hairdo? I just think that would be the greatest thing. <laughs> By DJ, DJ had put it on him. That'd be the combo you need right there. Yeah, yeah. okay. So the rest of our top 10, um, at six, Xander Shovley, seven, Patrick Reed, eight, Rory McIlroy, nine, Sergio Garcia, and 10, Cameron Smith. Still to come, we're gonna go through three sizzlers. We have some dark horses and we have one big name that I'm big on this week and you are not, and we're gonna discuss why. <laughs> Play Money Grabber on the SG Tour. Instead of strokes, it's all about the cash. You pick a team of four players, one from each tier, and scoring is based on the money that your team wins. Your guys missed the cut? No problem, you're still in the game. The SG Tour Golf Gaming App, available on iOS in the App Store. It's our tour report from Secret Golf for the Masters. We have gone through our full top 10. Jordan Spieth is our number one this week. And now we're on to our sizzlers. So three names that really made big jumps up our re-ranking. And Elk, we've said this, it's really hard. I mean, when we were doing our pre-production call, we changed our top 10 so many times because there's so many great names that you want to put in there. Yeah, this week, Diane, it's, it's you know, Getting onto the golf course and putting together a score is going to be very important early because, look, I talked already on the show about how firm the greens are. I'm talking to people that are there and they don't even know if the green, if the green will hold at 15 on a second shot. So they're already firm today. Um, so let's talk about Thursday. Do you go for the green at 15? Are you comfortable being over chipping back and all that sort of thing? So it's going to be a little bit of a different golf course, Diane. Oh, oh it's lovely. <laughs> it's lovely. Oh, what a beautiful fluffy cat. It's lovely. That's so cute. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe Lovey's a fan if, of our... If that was a black cat, that would be a serious omen, whoever... And, well, I was going to say, maybe Lovey's a fan of our first sizzler. Um, this guy, <laughs> that was so funny. So our first sizzler, I, I don't know, we didn't talk about this, but this just shocked me. His only start at the Masters came in 2018 as an amateur because he tested positive for covid before November got underway. So he's only played in one, he missed the cut. This guy, if you're talking about someone who's gonna be raring to go and relishing this chance, it's Joaquin Neiman. I like Neiman for a couple of reasons. I like him because he's so good, number one. But number two, he's close friends with Sergio Garcia. And I think he'll be playing his practice rounds with Sergio and getting a lot of experience from him and learning the golf course. I think Neiman is is one of the standouts of the bunch that's got a shot at this week. 
only because of some of the relationships and the talking points that he may learn from Sergio. Believe it or not, I don't know that he's going to be with him. I'm guessing he is, but I I know Neiman is a student and he will stick close to guys that know. And that's what I'm banking on on this pick. I think uh, Neiman's such a shot maker. I mean, he's got this um, just amazing creativity with some of the shots that he pulls out of the bag. And that's something that you do need around Augusta National. He also needs his putter to be hot, which is kind of his downfall. Yeah, and you know, we talked about the greens being firm. It it makes you not able to hit the ball next to the flag. So you finish up further away than you did in November. So you have to be a better putter from a, a slightly wider range. And if you miss the greens on firm greens, can you chip back to make the putt? So slightly different golf course, holes will be different. Seven will be different, 10 will be different, 11. All these holes are gonna change from what they were in November. Well, someone that could fear it, well, I should say Neiman is 60 to one. Um, our next sizzler is 35 to one. Um, talking about the putter, this is this guy's strength and he finished in a tie for a second last year. Sung J M, one of our producers on the show, Jay, who's gonna be here a little bit later on. He's so big on Sung J M this week. Well, I am too, Diane. He's a he's an elite ball striker. I think this he'll be up for this. He played well. I, I'm I'm sort of leaning towards people that played well in November because it's just it was just four months ago, and they will understand this is a warm week. The ball's going to be traveling. The whole question for some Jay will be the putter, and can he get the ball close enough to the hole, and can he pitch the ball near the hole to hole out and keep going? Uh, it's a bit of a risky bet, but. When he gets going, he hits it good enough to stay in the hunt. Okay. Well, let's talk about a sizzler who is 175 to one. And he won the Honda Classic just a few weeks ago to stamp his ticket to Augusta. Another Aussie for you, Elk. Matt Jones is one of our sizzlers. Yep, I'm thinking about Jonesy this week for two reasons. One, he has a lot of experience putting on super fast greens coming from Australia, and he is, draws the ball. We watched it on TV when he won the Honda Classic. He is a prolific, like Xander Schauffele. He's probably the, those are the two standout guys that make the ball go right to left, but under control. That will serve him well on two, five, you know, nine, 10, 13, 14, all these holes that go right to left are perfect for Jonesy, mate. And I think he's gonna have a great week. And he's been playing really well. The form leading up to the win, it was, um, he'd been so consistent and he was getting himself in the mix quite regularly. So to get that win at the Honda Classic, it must have been like, yes, great confidence boost, brilliant time to do it. And he gets to play in the Masters just a few weeks later. Yeah, I think he's had a nice break after the Honda. Uh, he'll be roaring to go. Um, this will be all about getting off to a good start. And I think Jonesy is positioned perfectly. If you're looking at someone with some strong odds that's got a really good shot at being up in the top 15 players, then Jonesy's your guy. Okay, so our three sizzlers, Joaquin Neiman, Sanjay M and Matt Jones. Right, there's another big storyline this week that's uh, been developing. And as of right now, Monday, this guy is definitely playing in the Masters but there's so much focus on the knee of Brooks Kepka. Now he was out at Augusta National practicing on Sunday and he spoke to some, some of the media afterwards and he was like, I would only be here if I thought I could win and I, I do think I can win and I will be playing. So I am big on Kepka this week. You on the other hand, just the injury is too great and the recovery process is too long. Well, his knee is good enough to go down on it the other day and propose to his longtime girlfriend, Jenna, so that we know the knee is good enough for that. But my question, Diane, is, is not is the knee good enough to swing, it's good enough to walk the golf course for six days at relatively high speed. In other words, you've got to move pretty quick to keep up. So I never pick anyone that's just had surgery for anything. I don't care if they had no surgery, Diane. I am not picking anybody that just had knee surgery. Stop, end of sentence, that's it, I'm not doing it. 
Well, the thing about Kepka is he uh, he finished second in 2019, right behind Tiger. He had a top 10 um, last year as well. The injury came at the worst time. He won the Waste Management Phoenix Open, finished in a Tiger second at the Workday Championship. And then something happened. He fell when he was with his family, he said, and had to undergo surgery for a dislocated kneecap and ligament damage. But do you not think someone like Kepka, if he if he thought that he wouldn't be able to play, he wouldn't have turned up this week? Well, we don't know if he's going to play. I mean, it's only Monday, but we've seen him where he's had knee problems before, and that's gone into hip problems. We've seen him laying on the ground. We've seen him, you know, there's a lot of deferred pain that comes from your knee. You favor it, it goes up. I'm just saying, if I'm going to put my hard-earned cash down on somebody this week, I'm not putting it down on Kepka until... He can prove to me that he can walk. And by the way, this golf course is no pushover for walking either, particularly, as I noted, at the speed that you have to walk at. So, Diane, I wish him well. I'm glad he's engaged, but I'm not picking him this week. I was following Jenna's Instagram and I saw them on a plane heading out to Augusta at the weekend and I was like, yes. And even this morning, I, I had said on Twitter that I would love Kepka to win and people were replying saying he's not even playing. I'm like, yes, he is. <laughs> He has committed to be there, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens, I guess, as the week goes on. Well, they all they all want a jacket. They only we only get about fifteen, I'd say fifteen chances at one. So, you know, yes, let's go. Let's give it a run. Let's see what we got. Uh, we don't know anything about Kepka. Nobody knows what procedure he had on his leg. We don't know what happened. So, no, it's normal not to think that uh, we're going to bet on him. No way. Right, still to come, we're going to go through our Dark Horse Picks with Jay Kaplan. Saturday is considered moving day and you can play along on the SG Tour. It's a one-day stroke play competition where you select a team of four players to shoot the lowest scores of the day. Will you make big moves? Download the SG Tour Golf Gaming app on iOS now. Well, we're on to Dark Horse Picks for the Masters and Jay Kaplan is here to give us his picks. Now, Jay, Elk and I were talking about this, but I feel like when we're handicapping the Masters, it's kind of difficult. The guys that we have in the top 10, a lot of them are names that you would fully expect to be there probably year after year for them. But with the Dark Horses, there are some great names that when we re-ranked the field, they made big jumps up. And we're hoping with these guys, I mean, there's got to be a lot of value in a top 10 finish for sure. Diane. Difficult for you and Elk in the handicapping world. Not so much for me. I'm ready to go. I've been thinking about this event for like four months. I've got two guys, two, not four, but two, that are going to be near the top this week and unexpectedly near the top. I'm ready to go. Okay, well, I have a guy who I feel is uh, in a brilliant place with his game right now, and he played well at Augusta National in November. So anyway, we'll get onto that in a minute. We'll start with your first dark horse pick then. So who is it? And the other thing is as well is the dark horses aren't that shocking <laughs> this week because the field for the Masters is always so good, obviously. Yeah, so let's put some perspective on the dark horses. They might be familiar names and guys that are playing well, but they're just not those superstar names that you see at the top. So we're gonna start with a guy that's been on everybody's radar for some time because he's been playing so well. And he is a Canadian. We've had a Canadian win in the past, Mike Weir, who's actually in the field this week. It might be the only event Mike Weir ever plays all year. I don't know. But uh, this guy, I may have just given you my pick, but this guy has been playing unbelievable golf. He uh, has the numbers that match Augusta National. 35th in proximity, which is crucial for success at Augusta National. Also ranks 39th in average distance of putts made. You look like you're surprised. You shouldn't be because this guy's making his second Masters appearance. In his first was in November, a quiet, probably the quietest T10 in the history of Augusta. They didn't even show him on TV in November, 
My first dark horse pick shouldn't be of any surprise because he's a great value at 80 to one. It's Corey Connors. Well, you're right in saying that Cody Connors has been on everyone's radar recently. And I think back to his first Masters in 2019, when he had just won the Valero Texas Open and the following week was at Augusta National. So um, his form has been unbelievable, you're right. He's gonna have that nice kind of quiet confidence heading into this week, I think. Agreed, and he's one of those guys that uh, all of a sudden on Saturday, you're gonna see him like in third place. Yeah. You know, he's just gonna hover. Um, he's just playing so well right now. And he's a good player and he's tasted victory. Well, I don't think this is gonna bother him. Six months ago, he's got good vibes from his last time at Augusta National where he finished. Like I said, T10, I'm excited about this pick. And you're right, I mean, that's completely <laughs> overlooked. If you were to say to me, what position did Cody Connors finish in the Masters in November? I would never, ever pick a top 10. So it's a cool under the radar pick and 80 to one. So I'll give you that for a solid <laughs> Masters dark horse. You're welcome. <laughs> Gee, thanks, sis. Well, my pick actually finished in a tie for fifth at the Masters in 2020. It was his second appearance in this major. The first time he'd missed the cut, but he's a completely different player. And I think since November, this guy's just been very steadily moving along. He talked about the fact that at the Masters in November, he kind of enjoyed the serene atmosphere. He didn't have family there, didn't have friends there. There was no kind of like stressful obligation to please everyone else, I guess. So. I don't know, maybe the fans are gonna change things up a little bit, but he's a fun guy, he's got a great personality, so I don't think it's gonna to be too much of an issue for him. But his game has been really solid too, and he played great at the WGC match play just a few weeks ago. He's been working hard with his coach, and he's gained like, I think nine miles per hour club head speed on the driver. He's hitting it further, but his putting, when he's hot on the greens, this guy really has it dialed in. And as I say, finishing fifth at Augusta National last year, I think we know that he's kind of worked something out a little bit and hopefully he can take that forward. But my dark horse pick at 150 to one is Dylan Fratelli. What a build up that was. I'm kind of good at that. I, I think sometimes yeah. I should give the name out right away, but I just get rolling like a train and it's hard uh, to stop. Gosh, you're like an American Idol host. You just drag it out, go into the next commercial, leave us hanging. Why don't you do that route? Here's my issue with your pick, and I do kind of like them. I think, as we've always said with these dark horse picks, we're counting on them coming over their Achilles heel, overcoming their Achilles heel in an event. His Achilles heel it is his putting, 203. Yes an average distance to the hole, 186, five to 10. But you can look at this two ways with Augusta National. One, you can look at a poor putter saying, well, he's got no chance. The other is there's such unusual greens and difficult greens to read that sometimes you fall into dumb luck. So I'm gonna give you the dumb luck pick of the week on this one, Diane. Okay, okay. And as I said, you know, he must have been putting well last year to finish in the top five. So yeah. I'm, I'm banking on those, uh, that, that knowledge and those good memories coming back this week for Dylan Fratelli. Right, you have one more dark horse pick. We said it at the start, I mean, you look at this guy's name, especially for the Masters, and you think, how is he a dark horse? But he's 225 to one, so he definitely is. Yeah, and speaking of experience, um, this guy certainly has it. This will be his 17th visit to Augusta National where deep in his closet, he owns a green jacket. And he won it in one of the few masters where over par actually captured the title. Uh, he did so in 2007, hint, hint, that might give you an idea of who I'm gonna pick. He's coming off a miscut in Texas, which makes me nervous a little bit. That kind of had me second guessing myself just a tad, but maybe he wanted the early jump on Augusta National. So why do I pick him? Because his one Achilles is off the tee, where at Augusta, it's a little more forgiving. He's 158th on tour, but 12th on tour, average distance of putts made. And he's also 38th in five to 10 feet when it comes to putts. He's wily, 
He knows how to get around. He knows all the nooks and crannies of the greens at Augusta National. It's the one, the only Zach Johnson. Okay. I remember for the players a few weeks ago, well, last month, Colt Nost picked Zach Johnson and we were like, what a bizarre pick. Yeah. But his game has just been trending and trending and trending and he played good at the players. But we're seeing, he is, you know, one of those players, as you say, he's been around this track so many times now. So experience. <laughs> <laughs> my dog has been very very noisy today but he's he's got the experience and the knowledge and um, I think when these guys turn up to Augusta National that is special for everyone it doesn't matter how many times you've played but knowing that you've won the green jacket there has to be a sense of like calm and Zach Johnson with the way his game is right now I think it's a very good dark horse pick at 225 to 1 child yeah, my dog loves it too. And, you know, the one thing that kind of worries me is his last five, two missed cuts, a T36, T58, 251. But I don't think anybody expected him to win it in 2007. So I'm going to count on him to finally bounce back and play well. And the weather's going to be perfect. This is a guy that's going to be in play with his ball all week. I'm looking forward to, oh, there's my man right there, my good luck charm. I'm going to make sure that this guy is near the top because I just feel like that green jacket that he's got buried into next to his corduroy blazer that he probably hasn't pulled out since 2000 uh, gets a look this week. Don't be surprised. He's going to be a top 10 finish. Okay, so our three dark horse picks are Cody Connors, Dylan Fratelli, and Zach Johnson. So there's got to be good value in, as we say, like a top 10 finish for these guys. But this is Barkley, everyone. Hi, it's okay, he's baby. Be calf. <laughs> he is. He's also got a very poorly leg right now. So mama's looking after him. Anyway, um, if you haven't checked out our Secret Golf social media, go and have a look because Elk's been doing these very unique hand-drawn illustrations of all 18 holes of the course and with some strategy as well. So we're going to post them on our social channels over this week so you can check that out. And also we have games running on the SG Tour Golf Gaming app. Jay, have you picked your four ball team yet? Not yet, Diane, but you know, I can't wait to do it. And you have a good idea of who uh, a couple of my picks might be. But as you know, um, you'll finish a distant fourth this week uh, behind the experts. Um, but we will uh, see how we do this week. I'm excited about it. I say that every week. We'll see. You have to be quietly optimistic this week. Right, have a fantastic Masters. We're gonna be watching all week, obviously, and we'll be following along on our Secret Golf social media. Next week, it's the RBC Heritage at Hilton Head, um, another tournament that we love. So we'll be back with our tour report then, and of course, our Masters recap.